Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at a library called GIMP, which stands for JavaScript Image Manipulation Program. It's something that I've just come across today, and I really wanted to make a video on it because it is so awesome. So for a while, you haven't really been able to do so much image manipulation in JavaScript, but I recently just found this library, which really makes it simple to do a lot of image manipulation in JavaScript. So let's take a look at some of the basic functionality. I'm still learning this myself, so bear that in mind. So this is just a basic setup where we are loading an image and saving it. This is uh, inside of an uh, instantly instantiated function because we're working with asynchronous code. You could also just have used .dense, but I chose to do it with asynchronous await. So the first line here is that we just load the image. That's just the location of the image. You can also load this from the web. So that's really cool. And then we just save it down here by doing image.write. You can also write images asynchronously using write asynchronous. So let's just take a look at what this would look like. Let's run the application. And you can see that this then generates a copy of that image. By the way, this is the original image. So let's take a look at some of the functionality. So the first thing is that you can actually add text to the images, which is pretty cool. So we're just going to be adding this hello world. Now, the font that we're going to be using is some built-in font. This is bitmap fonts. And if you don't know what bitmap fonts is, you can actually read on this packages in PM. They really explain it really well. They have a really well documented package. I don't know why it's not more popular, but you can also, if you don't have a bitmap font, you can actually convert a normal font to a bitmap font using this program here. So I will also leave that link down below. For right now, I'm just gonna be picking one of the built-in fonts. There's a few different ones. You can find more on the website, but essentially this number will just change in between. You can, this can be black or white. And this goes from, I think it's like eight to 128, which is just different sizes and then in black and white. So let's try adding that text. And if we see the edited image, you can see that the text up here, if we just zoom in, is now added in white. So that's the first thing. Let's take a look at the next thing. So the next thing is image resizing. There's a few different ways you can resize images. You can re just resize them by putting the numbers in, or you can resize them sort of dynamically where you change one, like either the height or the width, and then it will automatically sort of keep the aspect ratios and automatically resize the other one. And you do that by doing this gimp.auto, which will automatically resize the either width or height. But let's just resize it normally. So resize it to 250 by 250. And there you go. Now this is 250 by 250. You can also pixelate the image. So let's see how that looks. And the image is now pixelated. Now you can also pixelate a certain area. So the first one is the pixel. So how much should you pixelate it? The next is the X and the Y. So where the pixelation should start. And then the width and the height from there. Let's try running that. And you can see that it has made a pixelated box up here. So for blurring faces, this could be really neat. You can also really easily clone images by just doing image.clone and then you'll get a clone of that image, which you could then modify. There's also blur. So let's just do a Gaussian blur by one. So we will blur by one pixel. And you can see that the image is now blurred. This is the original and this is the blurred image. There's also a normal blur. So if you don't want to use Gaussian blur, you can just use a normal blur. And that is using a normal blur. You can also invert the image. So let's try running that. And that will actually invert the image. Pretty cool. You can also change the brightness. So this goes from a negative one to plus one. So this will just either de-brighten it or brighten it. Try doing that. This will make the image a bit brighter. And you can also see it's brighter. You can also set the quality. So I really don't know what the value goes in between, but I would expect it from going from one to a hundred. I'm not quite sure, but this will change the quality. You can't really see the quality change, but the quality will have changed. The image will be less sized. We can actually take a look at that. Um, if we just go in here in the images folder and we, if you see it right down here in the corner, you can see that well, it's actually bigger. Well, it will change the quality. Okay, so um, like I said, I'm totally new to this library. I don't know a whole lot about it. So you can also do grayscales. So let's try running grayscale and that will actually convert this to a grayscale. 
Now, I think that was it. There's a whole lot of other things. You can convert it to a hashes combined images so you can add like a watermark. I'll include a bunch of resources so you can read up on this yourself because there's a bunch of things that library can do. I'm also just learning this library today. I think it's such an awesome library and I think really we have been needing this library in the JavaScript community because really there's not been a good way to manipulate images this powerful because manipulating images in JavaScript can be very difficult. I'm really happy for, to see this library and I will definitely use this in my own projects. I hope you learned something and, and I hope you're going to check this cool library out and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye!